Can you believe there's an ammo shortage? Yeah, and we're going to be talking about that a little bit, along with Barbara Baird and Rick Hector. Blackmanwithagun.com, Ken Blanchard's pro-gun podcast. If you are new to the shooting sports, you probably don't know that there is an ammo shortage and an ammo cost probably $5 more a box than it used to. Yeah. It wasn't always like this. But I'll give you three reasons why it is. Because there are so many new people into the sport buying firearms. There's the pandemic and the fear of the unknown. And there's push gun sales and ammo sales up through the roof. So much so that we don't even have enough raw materials to get and make primers and gunpowder and black powder and all that stuff. So it's a shortage of all the components that make ammo by itself. And on top of all of that, we get a lot of that raw material crap from China. And guess who's not a real big fan of China right now? Yeah, most of us. Well, there are tariffs and taxes and export and import fees on China, and they are a major exporter of all the elements of gunpowder and ammunition. So, with all that being said, there is an ammo shortage. And how I know is that my son just bought a 380, and I thought, hey man, just go to luckygunner.com or go to ammo.com or go online, look at uh, Cheaper Than Dirt, go to, there's quite a few websites that you can buy mail order ammo. And check it out. And you know what happened? <laughs> Butkus, nada, nil, nilch, no, yet. There was nothing to be found online for the 380. So we started to look around at other places, local places. And unless you were buying to shoot at a range, they had a limit on how much you could buy. Yeah. So I would recommend that you start right now before it gets any later in the year and find a source for the ammo that you're going to use for self-defense, that you're going to use for practice, that you're going to use for a competition and start, if you haven't already, keeping some, getting some, acquiring some. Make it your mission this next week is to find you some ammo, ammo that can sustain you through the winter. Sounds like squirrels, right? Yeah. And maybe... Curtail your practice just a little bit. Ammo, we're going to get more ammo, but it's going to be like 2021 when it comes back. So you're going to need to hold on to what you got. Unless you have a reloader and have all the stuff that you need to make pounds and pounds of your own ammunition, I would say slow your roll just a little bit for the self-defense part. Now, we've had ammo shortages before, but a word to the wise, this one is different. There's a few more things happening in the world and uh, don't want you to be caught with your pants down unless that's how you want to roll. Then it's quite all right with me. Just having fun with off limits in Mr.'s house. Did I just catch you having fun? No. Ah! 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 Oh! Lord have mercy, my baby. Direct from our newsroom in Washington, in color. This is a press release, October 8th, 2020, from Silencer Co. They launch a new blog. West Valley City, Utah. Silencer Co. is excited to launch a new blog on his website today. The blog will feature stories from some of the outdoor industry's top and rising star communicators, who will bring real-life use of the line of suppressors to the forefront. Follow along as they discuss use in the field, personal protection, and the science of suppression. The team is headed by veteran blogger and editor Barbara Baird, who publishes Women's Outdoor News and writes for Top Gun and Outdoor Publications. She is joined by the following communicators. Ken Blanchard, Ashley Lunville, Larry Case, Brooke Lee Grant, and Dr. Jason Baird, a.k.a. The Bomb. Blanchard is reputed for his popular podcast, Black Man with a Gun, and will be bringing videos focused on Silent Co.'s history and presence in the industry. Lunvo is the former Miss Wheelchair America and an advocate for physically challenged outdoorsmen everywhere as she shoots and hunts in her backyard in Wyoming. Case is a retired game warden from West Virginia who has risen rapidly 
in the world of outdoor writers and brings his cagey sense of humor along with every story. Grant is an up-and-coming outdoor communicator from eastern Texas who grew up hunting and shooting. Finally, The Bomb will be the blog's technical go-to guy. With a Ph.D. and background in explosives, this former rocket scientist and current-day expert witness will contribute the real meat for the knowledge seekers out there. Watch for weekly updates combined with social media videos. And uh, just in case you missed what I said, here's a conversation I had with Barbara to talk about this very thing. Barbara Barrett, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ken. It's a pleasure to be here. The publisher of Women's Outdoor News and a whole bunch of Top Gun outdoor publications is now the boss of this blog. How cool is that? <laughs> Well, you get to call me boss, too, I guess. So I don't know. Is that cool? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. How'd you, <laughs> how'd you pick this team? And, and tell, me, tell me about the whole thing. How did it get going and how did you do it? Okay. Well, Silencer Co. is the number one suppressor maker in the nation. You and I both knew that. know that. They make wonderful suppressors, um, just state-of-the-art cans, worth every penny, and um, worth the weight, <laughs> shall we say, which is now, what, about a year, 14 months, something like that, before you get one, if you if you buy one. Yeah. I don't know. What Have you heard anything about permit problems? No. With all the other stuff that's happening, the plagues and stuff, people are kind of, like, happy with that. Yeah, well, they're still selling silencers just, you know, out the door, uh, probably faster than they can make them, probably because we have a whole bunch of new shooters, too, who are really interested in having a reduction in noise and um, a little bit of recoil. But um, how I chose the team was, and, and then the blog concept was um, Jessica Callum, who used to be over at Remington, is, um, an, well, she's become a friend of mine over the past few years. We've been a lot, on a lot of hunts together, a lot of shooting events together. And then she jumped over to Silencer Co. to do their their public relations. And um, she and I were talking and uh, I was talking about this new trend. Springfield has done it. Springfield Armory, Smith and Wesson just did it, just launched it. And where these companies are launching their own blogs, and I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, well, you know, how credible is that?" But, but it still is credible because it's a story, and it's a story about a product that is out there being used. And a lot of times, the content marketing is what gets a little more traction on Google than just buy this suppressor or this gun at Cabela's or at your local gun shop type thing. So we're finding that content marketing really is important. And so for some of these companies, if they want to get people to come to their websites and read about, you know, or, or if they have questions, for example, if they have questions about how to clean suppressors or, uh, you know, supersonic versus subsonic ammunition, this is a place where they can go and they can get answers from people like you and people like the other uh, five people on the team. Cool beans. So how did I go about, you asked me, oh, I'm sorry, because you just asked me how I, how I picked you guys. Too. Yeah, yeah. So you want me to go on with that? I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, please do. So um, yeah, I've been, yeah, I know you've had a day, and believe me, I've had a day at the North Carolina Zoo with five children under the age of eight. So, you know, I'm, I'm not on my, uh, my total game here either. Super so grandma. This, but I'll try to, try to be coherent. I know. Oof. Uh, tired granny is more like it. But um, so, well, you're on the team. And, and of course, we chose you because you're the only one on the team that knows how to dress to carry concealed in South America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm the man on fire. So uh, that's right. And a lot of other reasons. But I know that uh, we're particularly interested in the tactical knowledge that you bring and self-defense, personal defense uh, tips and tactics. And, and that you believe everyone on the team believes in using suppressors for various reasons. And um, you have to be a believer. We're going to have uh, an interesting time here telling America why. Uh, another person who is pretty close to you over in West Virginia is Larry Case. And he is a retired game warden. He really was quite high in the pecking order of game wardens over there, some kind of a chief. And now he writes for hunting and, and uh, shooting magazines. And he's the real deal. Uh, he hunts with dogs and he's always out hunting in West Virginia and around the country. And so for that particular market, which is small, but there's a particular market that is really interested in using suppressors on hunting guns. That's why we brought in Larry. Um, another person we brought in for that market is Ashley Lundvall. Um, have you ever met Ashley? 
I don't think so. She is former Ms. Wheelchair America, 2013. Her um, advocacy was for the outdoors. She will fly fish from a track chair. She hunts in the mountains of Wyoming in her wheelchair and on an ATV. Wow. Um, she is an amazing, amazing physically challenged woman who was 16 when she was injured at a dude ranch in Wyoming, uh, pitching hay, fell off the hay wagon and fell on the pitchfork and then oh. never walked again. But she didn't let that stop her. She's written a book, Redefined Life. Um, she has a great website. And she also um, believes in using suppressors and especially for people who are physically challenged because they are. Uh, offer some recoil reduction. So for that reason, and she's also been working with her daughter who is 10 years old with suppressors. So that brings that whole youth market nice. into play. So we have Ashley on board and then we have an up and coming new writer and her name is Brooklyn Grant and she is out of Eastern Texas and she just grew up hunting and shooting and she just built her first AR using the new lower from Silencer Co. So that's pretty cool. And let's see, who am I forgetting? Oh, I'm forgetting that guy that's been around me for got, 42 years. The yeah, guy you live with, right? <laughs> yes, yes. And he's actually been down in South Carolina blowing stuff up today. Well, I've been up here in North Carolina at the zoo and um, for an industry day for a, a big company here. But anyway, my husband, Jason Baird, a.k.a. Dr. Bomb or The Bomb, is a ballistics explosives expert. And so I know when I started getting my suppressors, I think I have seven of them now. But which is really amazing um, to have that that collection in my safe. I know, right? But when I got my first one, he took the first one apart and told me it was missing an O-ring. Only he would know that. And then uh, come to find out that, well, he would. And he also worked on uh, trying to figure out why this, that Challenger blew up because of the O-ring problem. Remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah. When he was in the Air Force down in Florida. So um, he's like, well, this thing's missing an O-ring. And so I guess, you know, if anybody's going to notice that, he would. And so... Uh, I think it was because it had been used and maybe abused a little bit or maybe, you know, like used a bit. And then, uh, so anyway, it is important to clean suppressors and stuff. So he had that thing taken apart and he's, he's like that because he's an engineer. Mm -hmm. So he's also a writer, he's written books and that kind of thing. So he he said, well, you know, we really should just bring you on board in case people have questions about cleaning, about the engineering, about why the baffles are turned one way and then the other way. It, it gets uh, a little, you know, it gets a little complicated sometimes, especially with this new switchback where you can um, put it on a pistol or then extend it and then put it on your rifle. You can have like low, mid, medium, and then long. Oh, wow. Um, the presser is you know, three parts, but then you have to turn it so that the baffles are facing a different way if you're going to use it in a different configuration. So um, that's the kind of thing like people want to know. People who shoot suppressors really are are gear oriented. They're techies, mm-hmm. gearheads about guns. So we wanted to bring in somebody that can, if he doesn't know the answer, he'll find it True. for you. And then of course, uh, me, I'm number six and I'm there for the things like, I just got to interview Jonathan Schultz, who is, who's a genius behind Silencer Co. The guy that started in a garage with the American story, the American success story. And, you know, someone sketched something on a cocktail napkin that he then took and had patented and worked with that person. I mean, it's just like one story after another about how he built this company, which which has, uh, you know, just soared to success. That's what so right there. that's the story you want to tell. Yeah, most definitely. Silencer Co., new blog coming soon. Anyway, we, uh, we're we just excited to move forward and we've already had some good reports out. People are excited about it. People in the industry I just heard from Dan over at Truth About Guns, and he's like, you know, this is great. I'm going to be following this because that's why we're here. We want we want to be able to help people and tell you know tell what we're doing, boots on the ground, and suppressors screwed into the ends of our muzzles. I mean, we're that's what we're going to do into our barrels. That's what we're doing. Barbara, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Ken. Since 2014, I have been a member of the Crossbreed Holster family. If you carry concealed. Get a holster that supports not only your firearm, but your freedom, the faith, and this brother with a tried free lifetime guarantee. Crossbreedholsters.com. Crossbreedholsters.com. All right, also in the news, Masad Ayub 
is named president of the Second Amendment Foundation. This is out of Bellevue, Washington. Internationally known firearms author and trainer, Masad Ayub has been named president of the Second Amendment Foundation, succeeding the late Joseph Tartaro. The election of to president of SAF is one of the most cherished honors of my life, Ayub said. I have been proud to serve for many years on SAF's board of trustees and will do my best to continue my commitment to what I consider a civil right and indeed a human right. He says, I am humbled at the thought of replacing my longtime friend and mine and mentor Joe Tartaro, he continued, and frankly doubt that anyone, myself included, can truly fill his shoes. I accepted the position only after being assured that it would be an interim appointment and one of my primary goals is to find a dedicated Second Amendment warrior with a longer life expectancy than my own to eventually serve in this position. In the meantime, I will support the goals of SAF, particularly to further strengthen our ties with the law enforcement community and to enhance the organization's policy of embracing diversity in the community of the gun culture. Ayub brings a lifetime of experience to the position. He served 19 years as chair of the Firearms Committee to the American Society of Law Enforcement Trainers and several years as a member of the advisory board of the International Law Enforcement Educators and Trainers Association. In addition to teaching for those groups, he has also taught for the International Association of Law Enforcement Firearms Instructors and International Homicide Investigators Seminars. The winner of the Outstanding American Handgunner of the Year Award in 1998, Maz has worked has won several state and regional handgun shooting championships. He is the first person, he was the first person, to earn the title of Five Gun Master in the International Defense of Pistol Association. He has been handgun editor of Guns Magazine and law enforcement columnist for American Handgunner since the 1970s and has published thousands of articles in gun magazines, martial arts publications, and law enforcement journals. He is the author of some 20 books on firearms, self-defense, and related topics, including In the Gravest Extreme and Deadly Force, widely considered to be authoritative text on the topic of the use of lethal force. He has received judicial recognition as an expert witness for the courts in weapons and shooting cases since 1979 and served as a fully sworn and empowered part-time police officer for 43 years, mostly at supervisory rank. Ayub founded the Lethal Force Institute in 1981 and served as his director in 2009, and now trains through the Masada Ayub Group. He has appeared on CLE Television, uh, delivering continuing legal education for attorneys through the American Law Institute and American Bar Association, and has been retained to train attorneys to handle deadly force cases through the Armed Citizens Legal Defense Network. Ayub served for two years as co-vice chair of the Forensic Evidence Committee of the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers. He also appeared in each episode of Personal Defense TV on the Sportsman's Channel. We are both proud and delighted that Maas Ayub has assumed the SAF presidency, said SAF founder and executive vice president, Alan M. Gottlieb. I've had the pleasure of working with him over the years as a SAF trustee and look forward to working with him more closely in his new role. Without a doubt, Maas Ayub is a true defender of the Second Amendment and his devotion to protecting and advancing the right to keep and bear arms will be critical as we face new challenges. And then you can find more about SAF at saf.org. That goes for the Second Amendment Foundation, which you should join. This is Rick Etcher from Detroit, Michigan, of Legally Armed in Detroit. You're listening to Ken Blanchard's Black Man with a gun. Your source for Second Amendment advocacy, news, and information that you can use to empower yourself and protect your family. This is my friend Rick Ector, who is an icon now that I met back in 2007. I'm not quite sure whether it was before uh, my podcast began or after, but somewhere close to it. We had both attended the Second Amendment Foundation's Gun Rights Policy Conference, and Rick drove from Detroit to this place in Kentucky and Ohio border, and and met we met for the first time. 
He had been a victim of a violent crime. He was robbed at gunpoint by two people in his driveway after he got home from work one evening. And at that time, the only firearm that he had was a 12-gauge shotgun that he bought for home defense. He said that after some soul-searching, he made the decision to learn more about handgun ownership and concealed carry uh, classes and licenses. And he decided to take the NRA class to learn more about guns and personal protection. And soon after that, began his journey, which today he is, like I said, an icon for helping the regular person find their way to self-reliance, self-defense, and self-protection. Rick is a National Rifle Association credentialed firearms trainer who provides Michigan concealed weapons and concealed pistol license classes in Detroit for students at his firearm school called Rick's Firearms Academy of Detroit. And I want you to join me in a conversation I had with Rick talking about what happened just this year and just Rick's philosophy in general. Really cool guy. Sense, man, for real. I'm telling you, I was sitting around at the crib, man. Well, I've told this story a million times, and you know what? It still cracks people the hell up, man. I was like, let me go to my web browser, right? Black man with a gun. And, you know, all the sirens start going off, and I heard the angels screaming out, right? I found him! I know, right? (laughs) It's a great story, man. It it never fails to make an impression, for real. And it's, it's the truest, most genuine story I have about my path as a Gun rights advocate. But I'm still proud of you, dude. I mean, just, just recently, that thing you did with the women and all the women, that, that's that's some serious gangbuster stuff right there. That's gangster. Oh, yeah, man. And you know what? It really came down to, uh, in the end, it came down to me just stepping out on faith saying, I'm going to do this thing anyway, you know? You know, we had the specter of COVID, you know, and you got to deal with that and you take all the take an abundance of precautions and do everything you can to make sure that you minimize any impact to anybody that participates. You know, the media froze me out. They didn't want to tell what I was doing. And uh, the political, you know, consequences, I think, is what kept our, our governor, you know, from attacking us and shutting us down. You know, uh-huh. we had a record breaking event, man. And, uh, you know, it was just awesome. So give me some and you know give what? some details about it some in the weed stuff for the folks who had never heard it before. Never heard of what before? Oh, what, what the you just, women's event? Yeah, what you just did. Oh man, we, so we trained in excess of uh, 1,900 women how to safely load and discharge a firearm at a target. We gave them 20 rounds each. You know, this was that program, of course, as you know, that I, I started nine years ago, man, when I observed a news story on my local TV station here in Detroit where a woman's naked body was discovered in the field and uh, just laying on the street. And I thought someone should do something about it. So I gathered some friends together and we decided that we were going to offer free shooting lessons to any woman that met us at a gun range. Long story short, you know, we trained 50 women that day. And I remember talking to you personally, you know, after that was over and, uh, True to form, always a, a beacon of positivity. You know, I was kind of, you know, disappointed that we only trained 50. And you thought that that was a, an outstanding number. And uh, emboldened with your encouragement, I kept growing this program. And, of course, you know, what we did earlier this year in August, man, we trained in excess of 1,600 women how to safely operate a firearm in a gun range in two days, man. So, uh you know, I'm stoked. We did it in two different gun ranges, and uh, I'm looking to grow this thing. Who knows how many gun ranges we'll do next year? You know, I was trying to think of the impact because not everything you do now, you have to measure it on what's the impact. You can't just do stuff for the heck of it. But the impact of this thing is that's 1,600 people that 1,900 19, 1,900 people who used to be or either on the fence not sure or against gun ownership that will no longer be used by the other side 
Well, here's the great thing, man, because, you know, the, the anti-gunners, man, they have all these, I feel, unfair and inaccurate characterizations of who we are. And when you can impact that many people by bringing them into the fold, by at least exposing them to guns, and then they have a positive experience and then walk away from the event going, hey, I had a lot of fun. I learned something. I have more information and I can make a more informed decision. And when people talk about folks who own, carry, use, or practice with guns, now they're talking about me. And when I look at myself in the mirror, I don't feel that I fit those characterizations that certain people are pushing. So maybe there's some other things that they're telling me about guns that aren't true. And of course, when we look at, man, the environment we're in today, man, as a firearms trainer, I'm still conducting classes, but now there's so many, you know, people that are shooting and so many first time gun buyers and getting ammunition is a problem. And of course, you know, we have to practice, you know, not only do we need ammo to train people on how to use guns safely, but we also have the burden of keeping our shields, our skills sharp because shooting, as you know, Ken, is a depreciable skill and we need to put in work on a regular ongoing basis, if not, you know, just once a month, you know, in a bare minimum, 50 rounds uh, down towards the target. So, you know, we don't ever want to be in a position where we're faced with imminent jeopardy of great body harm, sexual assault or rape or death and be fearful that we might miss because we haven't, you know, had the opportunity to put in our regular reps downrange, man. So, it's a really, really interesting place we find ourselves in right now. But, uh, you know, it's a good positive trend. So many brand new guns are coming up the fold. And uh, it can't help everything, affect everything in a positive direction. You know, we have people who are empowering themselves. We're putting bad guys on notice that there could be negative consequences and repercussions for bad behavior and unlawful activities. And uh, it's nothing but a positive thing. You know, we just have to work through, you know, this system that we have set up now where, you know, we're, we're having trouble getting ammunition. And uh, I'm looking at the situation with the one gun manufacturer that's in bankruptcy at Remington. Yeah. You know, not only do they make guns, man, they also make ammo, right? Right. And not only do they make ammo, they're one of the four major producers of primers, which seems to be a bottleneck in this entire ammunition shortage problem you know how do we get ammunition primers to make the actual ammunition and uh, i was talking with bill frady on his lock and load show about that last night you know primers is like a bottleneck in the process and it's not a real easy thing to do for you know to someone to come into the market and start making primers there's a lot of things that have to happen for that to even be possible man so uh you know, and, and the one thing I will say about your show, man, you know, I tune in and periodically you would come out and you would like, if in your very calm, soothing demeanor, you would say, look, you know, don't panic, don't freak out. You know, things are going to get better. You know, we just have to ride this period out. And uh, if you truly want ammo, let me tell you, you will do what's required and you'll get it. You know, if you got to if I personally have to go to Ohio and get it, if I have to go outside of Metro Detroit and go to a town, you know, small town, you know, maybe a, a maybe an hour's drive away or two. Yeah. If you want it, you can get it. Yeah, the hustle is on. What happened after the after this event in August? Since then, between now and then, how has it helped you? How has it hurt you? What have you learned that you've done? In case somebody else wants to follow in your footsteps or. What did you plan to do better yeah, next time? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a lot, I learned a lot of things in that whole process, man. One, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty about, you know, the governor and the environment. And, you know, uh, you know, what, could we actually pull the thing off? You know, I had so much help that uh, I had to reach outside of, you know, the state of Michigan, man. And you know what? One of the great things about like going to conferences, like when I followed you to that first GRPC I went to for Mitchell, Kentucky years ago, man, is that the friends that you make, man, and I know I've heard you say this, if people like you, 
man, they will help you. And I've had people come from as far as Washington State, California, Ohio, Florida, Georgia. Uh, I had a couple people from the New England States, man. You know what? I put out the clarion call for people to help me. And you know what? By having friends who like me and who believe in what I'm doing, you know, I learned that, man, it, it's good for people to like you. And, man, they helped you. And I couldn't have done it without all those people. I've learned that women are feeling the need for firearms and, and personal protection and and taking on a more active role in protecting their household and their babies, man. And I have never seen such an interest in women in terms of firearms training. And if we're serious about increasing our ranks, you know, yeah, we still need to get the word out. We still need to, you know, reach out to women and make it easy for them to give them information and bring them amongst our ranks, man. Because I'll tell you one thing, you can't turn someone on to the benefits of gun ownership and have them not at some point in time in the future take a long look at what's going to prevent them from having access to guns and using them for personal protection. Inevitably, it's going to fold, I believe, and it's going to affect who they support politically and who they vote for. You know, it's not something that happens overnight, but here's the thing. If it's worth doing, it's worth putting in the effort over a concerted period of time to get that result. You know, I've been doing this event for nine years, man, and uh, I know that I have changed a lot of people's opinions about guns. As a matter of fact, my favorite story that I like to tell about this women's event was uh, this one sister that was I believe she was visiting from uh, uh, Chicago, as a matter of fact. She was visiting a friend in Detroit. And when she arrived at her friend's home in Detroit, you know, the friend told her, hey, look, I'm signed up for this free shooting lesson, free range safety briefing, this Rick Rick Echo guy is putting on. You can either stay here by yourself and watch cable TV, or you can come hang out with me at this event. Uh, this woman from Chicago, she's anti-gun, wasn't, you know, looking forward to accompanying her friend, but she went anyway because she didn't want to be cooped up in the house. So lo and behold, this anti-gunner from Chicago, this woman who really was uh, inexperienced and had no credible knowledge about guns, she went through the program, she finished it, she completed it, she took a picture with a target, and she was beaming with pride. And that one experience forever changed her views on guns. And she talked about how when she got back, she was going to do what was required to legally become a gun owner and explore getting a carry permit. Man. So, you know, if you just reach one person, man, change one life, and then the people that they come into contact with, the people that they network with, the people that they interface with, you know, it's going to have a ripple effect that's going to extend out at least a few, you know, different levels and ways, man. And you never know who you help today, what impact they're going to have on others down the road, man. And uh, I may never know how many people ultimately are affected by the program that I put on every year, man. But I, I know that it is worth it. And I know that Far more than I'm cognizant of, there are people out there that have benefited from this program, and it's what spurs me to continue putting it on. Amen to that, dude. You know, everybody got a mom, so if there's 1,900 mothers there, you did you did some work, homie. <laughs> you know, I thought I was. Uh, you know, one of the big questions that comes up is like goal setting, and I'm really big on goals. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to do something. You have to say, well, what are you trying to accomplish? What's your metric? What's, what's your what's your endpoint? What's your goal? And I thought that fifteen hundred across days was a stretch goal. I thought it was a stretch goal, man. Because the year before we trained just in excess of eight hundred women in one day. So I figured a two day event, you know, it would be a stretch back to back days if I could get fifteen hundred. When we trained in that first day. 1,200 women. I mean, we absolutely crushed it that first day. And, uh, man, I really felt bad, looking back on it, that I wasn't aggressive enough in terms of my goal setting 
to push it and actually hit 2,000, man. But, uh, you know, it's one of those rare occasions when you set up what you feel is an ambitious goal and you actually hit it. You know, I just didn't realize that I'd be disappointed in hitting a goal because it just showed that I wasn't aggressive enough. I thought I was abundantly aggressive, but, uh, you know, I, I have to revisit, you know, my whole method of, of thinking about what I can do, man. You know, there are times when you just have to put it on faith, man, that unseen forces in the universe are going to conspire to make your dream become a reality, man. So have more faith. That was, that was huge right there. And I think Michael, <laughs> Mike, Michelangelo said, he said, the, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving a mark. And you just said it in the same way. I'm telling you, man, you know, on the one hand, you know, I'm overjoyed that I absolutely crushed the goal. But on the other hand, I'm like, man, I could have had 2,000, you know? Yeah. It wouldn't have took much more to hit 2,000. But, but now, uh, now you I know. Had a lot of help, man. And one of the great things about it, man, is that, you know, when you have people that, you know, work you know, with you with accomplishing the goal, man, is that when they like you, and not only do they like you, but they buy into what you're doing. But here's the great thing. You actually empower them to make decisions, right? And so one of the big things that came out on the training event on the second day at the range that had smaller capacity, man, my staff, they were like, look, we're trying to, they were, they were saying to themselves, we're trying to hit 2,000. This is what they were saying, right? And they were like, we can't hit 2,000, you know, if we keep going the way we're going, man. So. They took it upon themselves, and I love them for doing this. They came up with a plan to hit 2,000, you know, unbeknownst to me, but they came up with a plan to train more women based on the bottlenecks that we had because the gun range was rather stringent on how many people we could have in the facility. And we moved training outdoors because, fortunately for us, Mother Nature was cooperating. And we just started training women in mass with these informational sessions about fundamental firearm safety out in the parking lot where we had an abundance of space. And then that freed up all the bottlenecks that we were getting in terms of giving women their free brain safety briefing to ensure that they had at least a bare minimum of knowledge before we put a gun in their hand and had them pull the trigger, you know, one-on-one with firearm trainers. So, man, it's, 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 it's just a testament to what you can do with inspired people who, buy into your goal and want to help you to succeed, man. You hear about all of these management types that have people who don't really believe in their their management and their leadership. They engage in practices such as what they call malicious obedience. Mm -hmm. That's where they do exactly what you told them to do, even though they're the experts at that job and they know that it's flawed but they're not going to improve the process to help you reach the goal because they don't like you. And so their, their excuse is, well, we did exactly what you said. Yeah. Instead of them being motivated to help you reach your goal and exceed it, man. So my hat is off to the people, man, that I had, you know, working with me in this project, man, that, that, that bought into what I was doing. And here's the big thing that actually liked me, man. Because I had people that came in from out of town and traveled pretty much halfway across the country on their dime to be a part of this, man. So I'm humble, truly humble, at those people that bought into what I was doing and came on their own dime to help me, man. For real. If, if people are interested in every single person that came out to the event, I would implore them to come over to my uh, Facebook page, uh, Rick's Firearm Academy in Detroit. Scroll down to the actual event, and I have an official write up. I did an official write up that went into Ammo Land, and I documented all the people who, who actually traveled to be a part of this program. Um, I identified many of the organizations, I identified our sponsors, and I made sure that I gave homage and tribute to everyone that participated. And one of the great things I like about this last iteration were the women that I had that served as my chief RSOs, man. You know, it's, it's the great, the great thing that one of the great things about being a trainer, man, is when you, as a training counselor, you not only develop firearms instructors and help them get credentials, but you get in, in circumstances like this women's event, 
you get to put them in positions of leadership and watch them grow and blossom, man. So not only do you get good friends, man, but you're actually creating leaders, man, and, and this whole gun rights community and and this whole experience we otherwise known as life, man. And it's just such a great thing to see someone grow and know that you had a part in that, man. That is a truly great feeling, man. I know that's right. I want to make sure I'm going to add um, your your post from Ammo Land in the show notes so everybody can can check it out. How can folks reach you, man? Man, I would tell I would tell folks to reach me. Uh, man, I, one of the big uh, portals I have uh, is my YouTube channel, uh, Rick's Firearm Academy Detroit. Go to youtube.com forward slash Detroit CCW. Over 2,200 video posts. A lot of my uh, appearances on your show, my friend, are there. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Detroit CCW. Legally Armed in Detroit.com is my blog, Detroit CCW.com. I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn, Rick Exeter. Let me tell you, Google is your friend. If you Google my name, Rick Hector, R-I-C-K-E-C-T-O-R. There is no way possible you will miss me. And I invite your your listeners to definitely follow me, send me friend requests, let's network, because I'm having some really wild, crazy, outrageous goals for next year, man. And as soon as I officially formulate my plan and start publicizing it, I'm going to need help, and anyone that finds this event to be a worthy uh, expenditure of their time and their labor, I would love to have truly. Well said, my man. This has been my friend and my brother from another mother, the one and only Rick Ector. Man, thank you for being a part of the show again. Let me tell you, I still remember hearing you, man. Let me tell you, that story I tell everybody. Hearing you on the the, uh, podcast, man, and... uh, Going up to Fort Mitchell, Kentucky, and following you around like a lost puppy, man. And one of the great, I'm going to tell you, one of the greatest things that I can point to in my walk and journey as a gun rights advocate is not only being like a huge fan of yours, but actually getting to know you personally and getting to be counted as a friend of yours. And it is truly and indeed an honor. And I am immensely proud of it. The pleasure's mine, dude. I feel the same way. You're the real deal. And so are you. And I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and supporting this podcast and this podcaster. I wouldn't have made it this long without you. In the show notes, you will find links to Rick's Firearms Academy in Detroit and his Legally Armed in Detroit links of Laid, Silencer Co., and the upcoming blog, which you want to check out. And don't forget, you can find all about me at blackmanwithagun.com if you don't already know. I want to thank Barbara for Baird for being here. I thank Barbara for sharing. Thanks, Rick, for chatting with your brother on short notice. And I want to have a special thank you to you. Yeah, thanks for listening. Stick with me. If you got questions, if you got uh, something you want to share, hit me back at blackmanwithagun at gmail.com. You know, if you want to be happy, Set a goal that commands your thoughts, liberates your energy, and inspires your hopes. Just in case nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Until the next time you hear from me, shalom, baby. Until next time, friends. To keep in touch with Ken and his cause, Head over to blackmanwithagun.com.